instructions out in the uh, speed shop today. Uh, it's a good day in the shop because I finally got myself my uh, knuckles. I've been waiting on a uh, guy for months, but uh, it was all worth it. I wish I was able to do some filming there, but uh, by the time we got there, it was after dark. Uh, this guy is the Ford guru. He's got a yard with countless Fords. He said he's got seven snow fighters uh, sitting there, Dana 60 kingpins with the big C's, uh, as well as countless other kingpin parts and uh, Ford parts. So he was the Ford guru. Um, and I picked up some cheap knuckles. And uh, it was quite the trip we got there after dark. Uh, he's got a big yard uh, in the back and the axles were at a big long line of assorted crap. Uh, the two that we needed, we thought we were gonna have to pull a kingpin in the dark. Uh, he's a good guy and he just said, uh, here's the entire axle, I'll uh, come grab it later. And uh, which is badass. So we didn't have to pull a knuckle in the dark. Uh, and he fired up his 1957 uh, backhoe, that uh, two-cylinder, this old thing, and uh, moved a bunch of crap out of the way. And uh, we chained it up, slung it in the back of the truck, and uh, took it back to the shop. So uh, here they are. Uh, the other thing with these is they're, uh, they look super random. For those of you who know kingpins, uh, why? Because they were off a 1974 low pinion passenger drop Ford Kingpin Dana 60 with this weird sideways steering arm. Um, this man was the Ford guru, told me they are the same aside from that hole there. But my uh, for, for my case, the Kingpins are the same. This distance, this distance is shorter. Uh, but I don't use those anyways, so it doesn't make a damn difference to me. Uh, axle was real weird. It had tiny little shafts. Looks like a Dana 44, but uh, it was a weird one-off axle, and this man knew his stuff. Next, I'm going to have to uh, fire up the old uh, grinder, clean the uh, these two bad boys up. Oh, and the steering arm... Uh, these bolts seized on there, so I'm going to have to uh, buck them off on this side, but uh, I got my own studs, so doesn't matter. Um, so I'm going to clean them up, which uh, it's going to be wonderful for my tenants. I uh, smell them cooking coffee down there, so it's uh, pretty much time for some punk rock and some grinding. But uh, we're going to uh, fire up the barbecue up on the sun deck and uh, pop these bad boys in there, get them good and hot. And then uh, here's my gusset kit that I picked up from uh, Backdoor Fab, my buddy Dustin. And uh, it looks like a confusing pile of parts, and it is. So I'm gonna have to figure that out, get them all on there uh, while keeping it hot on the barbecue and burn them in real good. And hopefully this will uh, keep the knuckle together a bit longer. Uh, so let's... Uh, Get to firing up the grinder and the punk rock for my uh, tenants. It's uh, early Saturday morning, so let's uh, let's wake up the neighborhood. Mmm. Gotta love 44 years worth of crusty, greasy crud that I gotta scrape off with the scraper first. So wonderful. Well, got the uh, passenger side knuckle cleaned up. Pretty much about as well as I clean anything up. Um, it's good enough. Metal's bare. Uh, I'm gonna go fire up the barbecue, toss this one on there on high, and then uh, clean up that one. It's crustier. Okay, well before I toss it on the barbecue, I uh, wanted to uh, blast a couple tacks just to kind of temp it up because as you can see, uh, with everything 400 degrees, it's gonna be a bit of a pain to kind of get that going so did some real light tacks uh, just to hold it all together it also gets all my metal hot at the same time um, the reason for the barbecue I guess is this is a cast knuckle and uh, it will cool at a majorly different speed than the mild steel so if I would just burn it all in right now and leave it uh, some of these welds would crack because it would just cool down too fast so uh, you get it good and hot on the barbecue 
uh, weld it all in. Well, first I'll tack it all together, beat it all around, get it perfect, weld it all in, put it back on the barbecue, and uh, let it cool down real slow. Uh, some guys use kitty litter, buckets of sand, uh, welding blankets, stuff like that. But I use the barbecue for welding my tubes on my 14 bolt and it worked mint. Uh, so I uh, got this all tacked pretty much as good as I it's going to go. I just ran these bolts in here just so I didn't uh, end up with any welding slag in the uh, threads there. Well, got this thing hammered down. I uh, got to go clean up the other one. But uh, this one smells like hamburgers. It's going to smell a little grosser once this thing heats up. But uh, should be good to go. Of course, since the nuts are uh, damn acorn nuts, I couldn't just buzz them off. I had to cut right through the uh, steering arm. Good thing I do not need a 70s Ford push-pull steering arm. What do you think, Paws? Does it smell good? No? Well, boys, got these things cranking away for about an hour now. This one's been on a bit longer. That's why that one's still smoking some of the goodness off. Um, I'm going to grab this, toss it through my little hatch there, and uh, hammer down on doing a bit of this uh, welding while it's uh, spicy hot. So this should be fun. It's heavy and it's hot. So. I just tossed you down there, and now I get to walk all the way around, pick the damn thing up. It's hot. Hi, Buzz. Good boy, Buzz Jack. Okay, um, well, here she is. Uh, this one's spicy hot now, so let's get to uh, doing some tacking. It's looking pretty mint. Well, there she is, all burned in. It's super hot right now because uh, I just poured all that weld into it at once. And uh, this one will go back on and we're gonna slowly cool it down. Uh, so I don't have any welds crack on me, but stoked with how it looks. Don't think I'm going to have too much cracking, uh, in the knuckles anymore. We'll, uh, we'll see. Stoked on this. 80 bucks well spent. So back on the barbecue for that one. This one's coming off, getting the same treatment. Boom. So driver's side knuckle welded out. Time to, uh, toss this one on the barbecue. And uh, then I'm going to slowly start turning it down, but probably going to leave it on high for the next half an hour, 20 minutes. And then maybe I'll turn it to medium, leave it like that for half an hour or an hour. And uh, work my way down. There we go. So, they're both back on the queue. I got it on high. I'm going to slowly drop it down. And all I need then, coat of paint, toss them back on. Stoked on that. Time to... Uh, Time to go clean up the shop. Well, got the knuckles all cooled down. Uh, and uh, just cleaned off the deck a little bit. Got rid of some of the uh, slag and whatnot on it. Gonna hit it with a coat of paint. Half-ass paint job to go with my half-ass welding job. Uh, it's kinda par for the course around here. I ran out of paint. Gonna have to grab another can, uh, give it a second coat. But uh, these bad boys are pretty much good to go. I'm uh, gonna throw them back on. I might uh, go talk to my buddies over at Northwest Fab about getting some, they've got some bronze bushings instead of these nylon ones, which are pretty soft. Um, it's more money than I like to spend, but uh, at the same time, it'll uh, 
keep everything together and uh, keep it a lot tighter. So I might do that, but uh, the end is in sight and we'll get this all bolted back together as soon as the uh, paint dries. So hopefully we'll have her back on the trail here real soon. Uh, got a run coming up in a couple weeks, so hopefully we'll uh, be out there. Cheers.